Here's the full guide to making a hard trap beat on FL Studio. Starting with the chord progression, I took the cassette memories preset from Pigments and laid down triads in the F minor key. I started with the F minor chord, then added an inverted D flat major chord and repeated this. On the fifth bar, I added an E flat major chord and an inverted C minor chord. And finally added another E flat major chord and an inverted B flat minor chord with an accent note of C playing at the end. I then opened another pigment and used the as below preset and turned off the function which modulates the pitch. I then played a note at the beginning of the first and fifth bar which follows the root notes of the chords. I then took the shooting stars preset and added this top line melody. I then added a lead pattern using the P-Files preset and pigments. To create this pattern, I simply took the chords and arpeggiated them. The term arpeggiated simply means to play a chord as a series of ascending or descending notes. I then routed this to a mixer track and added the shift and blur portal preset to make this sound less dry. Acting as another top line, I added a vocal melody using the Distant Voices pack, Seance, on Arcade. I added the Radial Flutter preset on Portal to give the vocal space. I then added the Pluck, which simply plays a repetitive F note on the third beat of each bar. Finally, I added the bass line using the Mod Will Me bass preset, where I turned the filter cutoff down to 400Hz and added some saturation using the Decapitator plugin. Here's how the melody sounds all together. Moving on to the drums, I added a snare pattern using the incantation snare from my drum kit. I then added the reverb to this snare and tweaked the following settings. I moved the decay time to one second as I wanted this to be short. The decay time is how long the reverb takes to fade out from its peak amplitude or volume. I increased the room size of the reverb to avoid the metallic sound of a smaller roomed reverb. And finally, I moved the wet level to 47%. The wet level is simply how much of the processed audio is playing compared to the dry audio. So in this case, how much reverb we can hear in comparison to the dry snare audio signal. I then added another snare to add bounce and variation to the beat. This snare was processed in the same way that the previous snare was. A simple two-step hi-hat pattern was then added. I then added variation by throwing in rolls and a one-third beat lower pitched hi-hat for the last bar. I then added a simple open hat pattern, hitting on the second beat every two bars, and a perk on the fourth beat of every two bars. Finally, I added the red cup 808, which follows the root notes of the chord progression. I get a lot of comments asking how I get a distorted effect with my 808s. I simply just boost the volume above 0 dB in the mix and add a soft clipper on the master. Here's how the drums sound all together. Now that I have all of the components of the beat, it's super important to create a structure that an artist can follow. Here's how I structured this beat. The first eight bars are the melody without the vocal and pluck. I then add the vocal and pluck on the next eight bars to add progression to the track. The next 16 bars are the hook, so I remove the bass line so that this doesn't clash with the 808 and play all elements of the track with the exception of the lead which only plays on the second half of the hook. I then have the next 32 bars as the verse, 
so I remove a significant amount of the melodic components, which slowly get introduced back into the track, and then I bring back the hook and repeat. It's worth noting that subtle effects like removing the drums or adding stutters to parts of the tracks are also important to keep the listener engaged. Here's how the final beat sounds. The link to the full beat is in the description and comments if you want to listen to this. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.